And welcome to the show, and it is the week that... And back then I was young and quite temperamental. Well, not really a maniac or anything like that, but let's just say if you got my dander up, yeah, I could brawl. Not often, but I could. These three idiots decided to call my friend the N-word and to make fun. I picked up the baseball bat and calmly told them that they had 10 seconds to get out of my face or I was going to crack their skulls open. They looked at me. They looked at what I was swinging. My friend is scared crapless. They run like hell. So, <laughs> yeah, and there was a mall cop there, and he told me not to do that again, but he understood because the mall cop was a black guy. And he overheard the whole thing. And it was more than just, hey, N-word. You know, it was more involved in that. And they didn't run immediately, but let's just say that they understood my intentions were that if they stepped one step closer, I would be swinging for the fences. So... Now on to Paula Dean. The problem is that she said it one time. Is there is evidence that she's said it quite a few times. And not only that. She's done things like have parties where black folks, black servants supposedly, dressed up in slave clothes and acted like slaves. Which would be highly insulting. It would be one thing if it were reversed and she had white folks dressed up as slaves at the party and to sort of make a bold political statement. But the fact is, this is the kind of racism that still exists in the South. The fact that there are still plenty of white people who are fine with black people being free, voting, having jobs, and... Um, you know, doing everything except they want one thing. For black people to know that they are second place to white people. Trust me, I've seen this, what I call stealth racism all my life. It exists. I have seen more than enough people who are, fr who are friendly to black people to their face than the black person leaves and the white person talks crap behind their back. Ra very racist crap. Yeah.
strands. And in those chromosome strands, we have made excuses for belittling people, for making them feel second class, for dominating people, for killing people, for raping people, for wiping out entire tribes. So Paula Dean could have been excused, as she said it, a few times over the course of her lifetime if she had a true heart change of heart. After seeing her quote unquote apologies, up to my black co-worker at work and call him the n-word he doesn't have the right to punch me in the face for saying that word but more than likely he's going to do it and even though it's what he did was illegal I will have deserved it because it was provocative But in the fullness of time, we will forgive Paula Dean if she shows some sort of contrition. There will be many people who don't forgive her. Her business will never be the same. She'll gain back some sponsorships. She won't gain all of them back. But do not cry for Paula Dean. In the end, she will be okay. She will be chastened, and she will learn that Maybe she should have just admitted, yes, I said some stupid things back then. I had some views that were rather stupid. I've changed. I've evolved. I've become a better person. And forgive me for my stupidity. All right. On to the Voting Rights Act. And the Supreme Court took out particular tenets of the Voting Rights Act that regulated elections in places that have had historical, historical problems with racism. Let me go ahead and say this. There's a reason why the Republican Party has been trying its damnedest to change the rules. If you've looked at the last two elections, presidential elections I mean, the, demogra the demographics are shifting dramatically against the Republicans. There are more Latino voters than ever before. And they're not just flooding in from the border. They're actually, Latino families are exploding. The Hispanic population has grown big. And I'm talking about naturalized citizens or citizens who've gained the right to vote. You have African-American populations that are growing big time. Within a generation or so, more than likely, white people will become a minority. There won't necessarily be a majority group in this country anymore. So, the Republicans realize where their voting base is. White, older, conservative, Christian. That voter base is shrinking. It's either dying off, becoming disillusioned, or becoming irrelevant. In the sense that those who are becoming irrelevant, are, her, her, whose views are so far to the right that they're abandoning the Republican Party for being too, quote-unquote, soft. Here's the problem. The Republicans...
bit of credit for avoiding that depression. And so does the Democratic Congress of 2009 and 2010. But because the Tea Party, who, by the way, are funded in a lot of ways by these super rich billionaires and corporations, if you've ever done your research about the origins and funding for these groups, there you go. They don't want you to know that because they want it to appear to be pure grassroots. And maybe the origins of some of these Tea Party groups were truly grassroots to begin with. But if you look really hard enough, the Koch brothers, Sheldon Adelson, and many others, they want to be unhindered to make as much money as they can with as little money spent on employees and their benefits with as little regulation as possible. So they can pollute all they want. They can roll over uh, communities and whatnot. It's ridiculous. And now... They're wanting to shape it to where voting is where I better. Walmart Home Office will not want you to believe that, but in a set, what they're actually wanting, wa wanting Walmart to do is to pay their employees what's called a living wage. <coughs> a lot of Walmart employees are actually on social services, food stamps, Medicare, a lot worse. They started pushing people that had been there for a while who were making a lot of money, pushing them to either leave or pushing them so hard that they did something that forced them to quit. Cut their hours back, made their hours to where it was very inconvenient. The simple fact is, ladies and gentlemen, is that Walmart wants to control their employees' lives. 
they're more than happy to have you work a 1 to 10 one night and then come back in at 6 o'clock in the morning and work 6 to 3. How many hours are between 10 and 6? 8. How many realistic hours do you get to sleep during that time? Good point. Now, the Voting Rights Act was meant to protect African Americans from, being, from basically being discouraged to vote, to putting hurdles in their way. The voter ID laws on the surface may make some sense, but here's the problem. Very few incidents of voter fraud ever take place and are ever found. It's so small, in fact, that you probably could count the realistic amount on your hand for the entire country in the last election. And a lot of that voter fraud was done by Republicans. But yet, they want you to believe that the Democrats want to stuff the polls with black people who are not entitled to vote or with Hispanic people who are not entitled to vote or with old people who are not entitled to vote or with students who are not entitled to vote. That's what they want you to believe. It should be easier to vote, not harder. It is your God-given right to vote. If you are a citizen of this country, you should have the right to vote. And all you should have to do is prove that you live in, an, in that area and you don't necessarily need an ID to do it. If you have a phone bill or an electrical bill or a tax statement, that should be good enough. Every time I have ever voted, I've never needed to use ID. They had me on the rolls, and I was allowed to vote. Never a problem. But for some reason, it's become a problem for the Republicans. Voter ID is not needed. Not at all.